Hey guys, I want to wish each and every one of you a happy Thanksgiving. Psalm 136, 1-3 Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for His mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for His mercy endures forever. One of the benefits of praising God is bringing Him into your life. When you thank and praise the Lord, you invite His glory and presence into your heart and soul. When your thanksgiving message reaches God, He can now reach down and bring light to your life with His mere presence. Psalm 1611 You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is $Watchman1963. Thank you all so much for your prayers and support. God bless. First Peter 5.8 Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Jenny Weaver, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. My first question, you know, before we dig into this, the meat of this interview, you were very heavily involved in witchcraft at one point in your life. Just really quickly, for people who don't know your testimony, who don't know your story, how did you get involved in witchcraft? Yeah, around the age of 13, I was uh, starting to get depressed. I was being bullied at school. And even though I was in a Christian home, um, my parents did the best that they could, but they were heavily on the side of just abuse. And so when you were in trouble, you were, you were beat. And so I believe the enemy used that to come against my self-worth, who I thought I was. And I was so depressed. I just thought if I would die, life would be better for everybody else. And so during that time, I was connected with some girls. And I remember going to a sleepover and they watched a movie called The Craft. And this movie came out uh, around 1996. And it was about four witches who were in high school. And these witches were bullied and picked on and their lives were kind of messed up and they used witchcraft to control situations around them and to get what they wanted. To the other kids at St. Bernard Academy, they were the girls who didn't belong. Whatever you do, stay away from them. Why? They're witches. Four girls are about to discover the dark side. Black magic. We can make things happen. I mean, this is it. This is real. I watched the movie. And I thought, I want that. Well, of course, in the movie, they went too far anyway. And the witchcraft had turned against them. And the girls were desperate to get out of it. But during that point, I didn't even see that ending. I just thought, oh, I won't go that far. I'm just going to be innocent in it. And I began to study the religion of Wiccan and study um, different spells and incantations and new age practices and occult practices that I was doing in a Christian home that nobody knew I was doing. And so what started off as something innocent where I'm just connecting with energy and the universe and vibes and all these innocent things that we see took me down a path of just dark desperation. Um, I, I felt at one point that I was living in like a haunted house because I was hearing scratches on the wall right next to me. I would feel brushed by me and be terrified that somebody is here in the room with me. Someone's watching me. I've always felt like I was being watched. When I would wash my face for the day, it was one of the most terrifying things that I did. When I took a shower and I had to close my eyes, I was so terrified. If I had to get up in the middle of the night to get a glass of water, I would run because I thought something's gonna grab my feet. I was an adult wow. at this point. And it took me far into drugs. Um, I ended up being homeless and on drugs, in and out of jails and all kinds of things. For nine years of my life, I was really in a dark place. And one day God did set you free, Jenny. And we're yeah. so, 
so grateful that you've renounced that and you are a minister of the gospel, an awesome worship leader. I love your testimony and 700 Club has, has covered your story quite yes. a bit. And so we're so grateful for that. But you know, Jenny, it's so troubling to see that witchcraft and the occult uh, is really on the rise. I mean, we're seeing it in stores. We're seeing clothing promoting, hey, I'm a good witch or I'm a bad witch, you know. Right. Uh, we're seeing uh, even witches having workshops and retreats and all these things. Why do you think this has become so much more mainstream, so much more acceptable? I think media has done a, a good job of pushing something to the point where it is now normalized. When back in the day, something like that for you and I, it would be shocking to see. And now because we have shows as early as, you know, daycare age, promoting witchcraft and sorcery. And it's okay, boys and girls, say these spell words with us. And it's so ABC preschool witchcraft that it gets into the hearts and the minds of people, including the people in church and people who are, are not really connected with the Lord and don't understand. They're easily deceived. And the Bible talks about even the very elect will be deceived. And so people are going to a whole nother source that's what they're they're wanting. They want a healing crystal because mm. they don't understand that Jesus is the healer. And there's no other source that you can go to except through Jesus. And so I, I'm seeing a rise of this. I'm seeing it become very trending on TikTok and things like that. And there's a whole generation of people who I feel like are being rocked to sleep by the enemy. And it's just really time for the church, like what you're doing, doing this interview, to sound the alarm. And Absolutely. say, no, we need to wake up and we need to say, this is not right. And it's not for my home. It's not for my kids. And, you know, it's, I believe that a lot of young girls are being targeted because there's this one, apparently she's an influencer on Instagram. Her name is, I think, Brie Luna or something like that. And she yeah. partnered with Smashbox, the cosmetic yes. company. And they created a whole cosmetic line using, I think, inspired by crystals. Right. Yeah. They're really... pushing the envelope. They want to yeah. see everything push the envelope. What's trendy? What's really shocking? What's going to get the attention of people? You know, they recreated that movie, The Craft, mm. in 2020. Really? They recreated the movie, and they invited real witches on the set, and they had the witches, before they would do a scene, to cast spells and then to invite the actresses to come into this circle with them while they were releasing spell words over the viewers and over the the scene. And oh they, they broadcast it and wrote articles like, isn't this amazing? We're getting real and raw with these real witches. And people are playing it in their home, and it's entertainment. And, you know, Charlene, I always say the first part of entertainment is enter. Enter. So be careful what's entering your home. Absolutely. I wouldn't mean, have that in my home, but it is definitely a shock factor that our generation is really gravitating towards. That is so shocking. I didn't know that. We were certainly going to make sure that people are aware of that. I understand, Jenny, that a lot of people are burning <clears throat> sage. What's your take on, on Christians even burning sage and what's that supposed to do? Burning sage is something that I did while I was practicing witchcraft. And when I got into a home with another witch that I lived with, the very first thing that we did as witches is we got bundles of sage from the New Age store. And we would burn sage to rid the house of evil. And so we would go in the corners and rid the house of evil. And I never thought in a million years that I would see Christians doing it. I thought it in, in my day, I thought, this is just what witches do. This is what people in the occult world do. This is what people in the new age world do. And now um, there's so much mixture and mm. it's passed down information that people don't know the origins. And it's really from, um, if we go all the way back, we can see that it is steeped in witchcraft where you're communicating with spirits, you're communicating with the dead, and you're trying to push these things back. But the only thing that will do that, the only thing that gets rid of evil is the spirit of our God, Amen. period. Amen. And so I personally don't practice that. I don't come in partnership with that. I don't recommend it for anybody. If you're trying to uh, clean your house, 
and get some Lysol. Uh, and, and if you want the evil to go, call on the name of Jesus. Amen. Anoint your house with some holy anointed oil that's been prayed over in the name of Jesus. That's right. That's right. So Jenny, what are some other red flags that people uh, should look for that something may actually be occultic or, or witchcraft? Well, we're seeing a, a rise of the, like I said earlier, healing crystals, mm. crystals that give you energy. And, and I, when I have conversations with Christians, their genuine question to me is, well, didn't God make this? So isn't it okay? And I just want to caution people that just because something is here and it is made, like for instance, uh, I can make drugs here. Yes. Drugs are on the earth. That doesn't mean that I should be partaking Absolutely. in it and putting it in my body. Absolutely. Um, and so we need to be careful that we are going to the source. We're seeing healing crystals. We're seeing people wearing these third eye necklaces. We're seeing people that are um, channeling their energy and chakras mm -hmm. and um, people communicating with ancestors and getting their ancestor spirits to give them power. I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about, I'm having conversations with Christians who are doing these things, wow. um, dabbling in things that the origins of the event, like the event that we have coming up this weekend, Halloween, dabbling in these origins where the origins, when you go back, you can't separate that it was steeped and done in witchcraft and the demonic realm. And so I would just caution people, just be mindful of what's coming into your home through movies, music, entertainment. Uh, you know, I went to the store that's a very popular store, and I even hate to say their name, but it was Marshalls. 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 And I was just blown away that Marshalls had actual witchcraft books. Like, oh, you can come in here and you can do a spell, and then you can get this sage, and you can get these healing. It was like a whole kit. And they're selling it like it's a holiday kit yeah. that you would buy someone. And so it's really starting to be very mainstream. And I just feel like the church needs to be aware that we need to stay away from all things. The Bible says to stay away from those things of darkness, but rather expose them not to partake in them. Man. What's your advice to, to people who Christians perhaps, um, and, and others who have dabbled in these sorts of things, but really didn't understand the real danger uh, involved with those things. What What's your advice to them? What should they do? Yeah, I would absolutely say have a conversation with the Lord. Always going to the Lord and, and saying, Father, I'm just asking you to cleanse me, wash me clean. God, I, I don't know if what I dabbled in, what, if that was okay or not, but I just want to make sure, God, that I'm right with you. And I ask you to rid me of any connection to anything in the demonic realm, the occult realm, or new age mm -hmm. practices. God, I want to follow your truth. And so just having that conversation with the Lord and then purposing in your heart that you're going to ask the Holy Spirit for guidance everywhere that you go. We are getting a lot through our eye gate. We're getting a lot through our ears, what we hear, what we see all the time. Asking the Lord, God, I need your protection today. I want to know the truth. And then if you have dabbled in things like I have had to do this. I have dabbled in things, not dabbled. I was fully immersed mm. in them. I've had to renounce, say, I renounce all occult practices. I renounce the craft. I renounce witchcraft. I renounce all the perversion that came with it. And I cling to the Lord. The Lord is my master. He's the Lord of my life. And I declare this day that I only serve and follow Jesus. And you make those declarations and the Bible says you can decree a thing and it will be established so that his light will shine on your ways. And so I absolutely would go to the Lord, repent for knowingly or unknowingly participating in something that would be considered witchcraft. Would you take a moment, Jenny, and just pray for those who will see this interview and lead them in a prayer like that. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we come to you and we ask you, Lord, that your hand would continuously rest on us. Father, we repent right now by the name of Jesus Christ for any involvement in the occult and new age 
in witchcraft practices. Father, we just repent right now. God, we're asking that you would wash us clean. Father, we say, come and take over. Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us in all truth. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we break every bit of witchcraft, every spell, every hex, every vex, every incantation, all sorcery, all magic, all voodoo. It is broken now by the precious blood of Jesus. We decree and declare that our bloodline is saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. And in Jesus' name, we will walk in your truth from this day forward. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. 1 Timothy 4.1 Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. The Bible expressly condemns all forms of witchcraft as we read in Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 12. When you come into the land which the Lord your God has given you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. God takes witchcraft very seriously. And the penalty for practicing witchcraft under Old Testament law was death, as we read in Exodus 22.18 and Leviticus 20.27. 20, you shall not permit a sorceress to live. A man also, or woman that hath a familiar spirit, or that is a wizard, shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones, their blood shall be upon them. The New Testament condemns witchcraft as well. Galatians 5.19-21 now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Witchcraft is Satan's realm, and he excels in counterfeiting what God does. When Moses performed miracles before Pharaoh, the magicians did the same things through demonic power as we read in Exodus 7, 8-11. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh speaks to you, saying, Show a miracle for yourselves, then you shall say to Aaron, Take your rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and let it become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh, and they did so, just as the Lord commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. But Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, so the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. And he practiced the dabbles in a power source other than the Lord Jesus Christ is witchcraft. Revelation 21.8 includes witches in a list of those who will burn in the lake of fire. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Christians must renounce any involvement with witchcraft, following the example of the early believers in Acts 19, 19 through 20. Also, many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all, and they counted up the value of them, and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. When a person comes to know Jesus as their Savior, they are brought into a relationship with God that guarantees their salvation as eternally secure. To be clear, salvation is more than saying a prayer or making a decision for Christ. Salvation is a sovereign act of God 
whereby an unregenerate sinner is washed, renewed, and born again by the Holy Spirit, as we read in John 3.3 and Titus 3.5. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. When salvation occurs, God gives the forgiven sinner a new heart and puts a new spirit within him, as we read in Ezekiel 36, 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. The Spirit will cause the saved person to walk in obedience to God's word, as we read in Ezekiel 36, 27 and James 2, 26. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep my judgments and do them. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So what about repentance? Repentance is not a work we do to earn salvation. No one can repent and come to God unless God draws that person to himself. As we read in John 6:44, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Repentance is something God gives. It is only possible because of his grace. All of salvation, including repentance and faith, is a result of God drawing us, opening our eyes, and changing our hearts. God's long-suffering leads us to repentance, and so does his kindness, as we read in 2 Peter 3.9 and Romans 2.4. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. Ephesians 2.8 and 9 declares, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Works are not the cause of salvation. Works are the evidence of salvation. Faith in Christ always results in good works. The person who claims to be a Christian, but lives in willful disobedience to Christ, has a false or dead faith and is not saved. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. That is why John the Baptist called people to produce fruit in keeping with repentance, as we read in Matthew 3.8. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. A person who has truly repented of his sin and exercised faith in Christ will give evidence of a changed life as we read in 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. A person who has not repented of their sin and exercised faith in Christ will give evidence of the works of the flesh, as we read in Galatians 5.19-21. through 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. A person who has crucified the flesh and belongs to Christ will give evidence of the Spirit, as we read in Galatians 5.22-24. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Believers are born again, regenerated when they believe. For a Christian to lose his salvation, he would have to be unregenerated. The Bible gives no evidence that the new birth can be taken away. The Holy Spirit indwells all believers, as we read in John 14.17. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him or knows Him, but you know Him, for He dwells with you and will be in you. The Holy Spirit baptizes all believers into the body of Christ, as we read in 1 Corinthians 12.13. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. For a believer to become unsaved, he would have to be unindwelt and detached 
from the body of Christ. John 3.15 states that whoever believes in Jesus Christ will have eternal life. If you believe in Christ today and have eternal life, but lose it tomorrow, then it was never eternal at all. Hence, if you lose your salvation, the promises of eternal life in the Bible would be in error. Scripture says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Remember, the same God who saved you is the same God who will keep you. Once we are saved, we are always saved. Praise God, our salvation is most definitely, eternally secure. Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning?